then brought back into the Project Veritas orbit to help Hannah Giles try and run the place. And who, That's who, been... The, who's that? Ben Wetmore is the guy who trained O'Keefe on how to create a conservative campus publication back in 2003-ish, 2004-ish at Rutgers. Okay, and what about uh, now O'Keefe now, his little van and what, what he's doing? Is he put, putting out any material? Yeah. Um, the first thing that he did with O'Keefe Media Group was uh, ostensibly find a bunch of people who had donated to Act Blue who claim they don't remember being donated, who claim that they don't remember donating to Act Blue. And so I think the, the, the premise of that piece what O'Keefe wants you to believe, but since we don't have unedited versions of this material, we can't really assess it for ourselves, is that, uh, you know, some some wealthy and sinister Democrats, a la a George Soros or whatever, uh, are uh, pretending, are, are funneling money through fake automated mom and pop donations into an organization like Act Blue. Um, so he did some uh, videos where he would knock on the doors of people and say, like, it says here that you donated to Act Blue. Do you remember donating to Act Blue? And um, some elderly person whose face uh, is pixelated yeah. said they can't remember. Uh, explosive stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and it's so easy, too, to fudge all that kind of stuff because you have um... – uh, like with the old uh, the 2000 election down in Florida where they scrubbed the voter rolls people you know a guy's name is John W. Smith and they got the you know Smith John W. You know, right yeah. yeah and all of these felons who were who have a name like Jackson right some Carl Rove type guy said like we want to make sure that every like Ron Jackson who exists in Florida is treated like this one felon Ron Jackson who's been denied the right to vote uh, and I believe, you know, yeah, this is like Greg Palast. Yeah. Great reporting on this. Yeah. Oh yeah, I've, I've um, done a, I've so, done a lot of reporting on it because I I knew those guys TLO and stuff that the uh, <laughs> and IRB search yeah, uh, who got together yeah. and, and created that company to do the the database scrubbing. You know, and uh, it came out yeah. in all the PI magazines. Hey, you know, what's this new company that's going to it's going to be? Oh, how can we sign up? And they had to come out and say, Oh, no, 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 this is just for one job we're doing. <laughs> yeah, to scrub yeah. the yeah, to scrub the election rolls. And but and the guy in charge of one of these companies was like a former smuggler and stuff like that. Uh, Hank Asher, who was buddies with the. Uh, uh, John Walsh, uh, Hank Asher, on these private planes. He was a cocaine smuggler by by history, and then wow. created all these database companies that were so cheap. Uh, we've done plenty of shows about that too. I think we talked talk to Greg Palace about that too as well. Um, you mentioned some other things uh, about. Uh, did we cover everything about Blackwater and uh, and um, uh, uh, Prince? Uh, not necessarily. Um, there was uh, a moment when uh, Eric Prince flew out James O'Keefe and a bunch of uh, his uh, undercover operatives. Or they, they used the term UCJs for undercover journalists. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Uh, there was a lot of like interesting like code code name, uh, you know, sort of hokey kids clubhouse uh super secret squirrel stuff going on inside inside the organization like they all had code names uh the operatives had code names and were referred to by code names via email um and uh the various investigations also had code names so in 2020 in 2019 the investigation into uh the, the attempts to infiltrate all of the Democratic Party primary candidates' volunteer campaigns was called Goldmine. And uh, everybody who did one of those had uh, a, uh, a name like Heisenberg or Lefty mm. or Jitsu or something that they would use in emails and texts and things because they were afraid of being infiltrated. Um, well, with good reason because we infiltrated them. 
but um, yeah, but you know, it, it's, it's not like they they have opposition like the Democratic Party has these private intelligence groups too working, you know, like Stone and you know, these characters. They, they really don't, you know, uh, not to this yeah. level. Yeah. Um, now, um, where was this, this charter? Where was they? Where were they incorporated? Like what state? Uh, I think they initially were incorporated in Virginia, but really? um, you know, they're they're officially. They're officially based in New York. They're in New York as a as a charity, uh, as a charity of journalists, as a, a, a charity of journalists. Yeah, it's a, a journalism nonprofit. I mean, like ProPublica is a nonprofit. Really, there's there's a great there's a great many uh, institutions these days that do uh, tax deductible uh, journalism work, um, and you know, to a degree, I think. God, because yeah. uh, the for-profit system of newspaper and magazine reporting in the United States is no secret. It's been hurting for decades. And, uh, you know, a lot of like the, the big scoops that have come out uh, related to Clarence Thomas and uh, all the money he got from Harlan Crow yeah. and the, the beautiful sumptuous vacations, that's all nonprofit reporting done by ProPublica um, and... Hey, do you know oh. the story about Harlan Crow's brother? No. Did he collect Nazi memorabilia? As oh, well? dude. There's a whole... You got to look this up, man. I did a whole show about it. There's a okay. whole uh, le- litigation. There's a, a lawsuit against him for sex trafficking by this woman, and it includes the local cops, strip clubs. There's this really shady Airbnb, if you look up the reviews about it online, where they're charging like $700 oh. a night to go stay at this little shady Airbnb. Uh uh, mm-hmm. And this looks like a really serious, legit lawsuit. They name the cop. It's not like uh, oh, the whole police department. You know, they're naming specific people in this lawsuit um, against oh. his brother. And his brother offered to let um, uh, Prince Andrew and Fergie live with him. Uh, they when they were beginning. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's. I, no one talks about it. You know how these things are. That sounds. Yeah. Quite juicy. Yeah, one wild man screaming in the middle of the night. And no one listens to me. <laughs> That's great info, man. Well, you know, I mean, no he, he's, I'm, I'm an opera fan. I'm yeah, a keen listener of the show. Yeah. I haven't bought Pure Soap Flakes, but I'm a fan of the show. I know. I know. Um, also, too, uh, Andrew Lowney, uh, who wrote all those great books on Mountbatten, and he's been on the show a couple of times, and uh, he's... Um, Writing a book now about Prince Andrew. Well, he's no longer Prince. The formerly known as Prince Andrew of York. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I sent him all this information, too. He's freaking out. He loves it, man. And so we talked about Blackwater. We talked about Prince. Uh, what about now Roman, this character? Now, Roman was indicted in Georgia, right? Yeah. yeah. He, he got his mugshot on Friday. Uh, he's. There was a long period of time where there wasn't a lot of photos of him out there. Hmm. Uh, I spoke to him on the phone in uh, 2010, February of 2010, because I had gotten some internal emails uh, related to O'Keefe back then. Um, O'Keefe was planning to mess around in uh, the Coakley race. Um, So the similarly more like – uh, election paranoia during the Brown Coakley Senate race in Massachusetts, James O'Keefe was uh, going to try to expose sinister busing by the Democrats. But the Democrats were picking up, you know, uh, illegal immigrants or something and driving them to the polls, which, you know, risking, you know, many years of jail time to. Uh, well, I gotta tell you something, man. I could stuff, stuff, stuff both by hand. <laughs> I could. I, I, they you should have, they should have contacted the... me in 2015. I could have testified. Uh, when you went outside the caucus in Nevada and you drove around that parking lot, there were tons of California plates. And when you went into that caucus, mm-hmm. these are supposed to be people in your neighborhood. I knew everybody in my neighborhood. I was a you know a well known guy. I didn't recognize one person mm-hmm. in that classroom. <laughs> Not one guy in there mm-hmm. knew me or I knew them, you know? So, and then it was all kind of shady stuff went on in Nevada with the Bernie caucus and, and Hillary. So, if only James O'Keefe would have. I can believe that. Yeah. You know. If only James O'Keefe would have contacted me. So, um, so how is Roman. James O'Keefe cares. 
Well, yeah. About, <laughs> about Bernie Sanders. Yeah. So how is Roman now connected to all this? What's he up to? Um, so just a small bit of backstory is that uh, Mike Roman was a private investigator based in Philadelphia. And if you remember during uh, Obama's first election, this uh, sort of like scare tactic, conservative moment about the new Black Panthers hanging out of some polls. Yeah. Uh, Mike Roman is responsible for that. He's the guy who videotaped that, and he found some, uh, you know, old white ladies who felt intimidated by these uh, folks uh, existing near the polls. And uh, O'Keefe, back in the day, had gotten in touch with Mike Roman for help doing this Brown Coakley race uh, undercover operation that ultimately didn't go anywhere. Um, probably to some degree because uh, of him. Uh, hopping to misdemeanor charges for sneaking into Senator Mary Landry's office in New Orleans. But uh, Mike Roman, after this sort of, you know, uh, collaborative era with O'Keefe, started working as like a political intelligence uh, mastermind for the Koch brothers. And during 2020, was being paid by the Republican Party and by the Trump campaign to work on, uh, you know, their massive effort to demonize mail-in ballots and, uh, you know, uh, explore and promote claims of election fraud against uh, President Trump and the uh, movements to make America great once again um and that has now gotten mike roman and uh you know rico trouble in georgia because he was instrumental in organizing the false electors and yeah. things like that from what i understand i i have not uh fully had time to read the entire uh Charge. Yeah, he appears Charge to be an uh, unindicted too in the DC case, and I believe there's more cases coming. What do you think? Uh, I think so. I think almost every uh, U.S. state that had some uh, of of these uh, false electors, uh, you know, uh, rustled up, could probably put together like some sort of similar case. And yeah, Arizona gave the, yeah, Arizona gave the green light, and uh, uh, Nevada said no. And Michigan has their own case up there. They didn't mention people like Trump, but they've got their own. The, the electors themselves are in the hot seat, and uh, so it seems like there's more going on. I, I think even Alex Jones and people like that could uh, uh, ultimately face some uh, problems. Leonard, uh, now we're, we're running toward the end. We've got less than 10 minutes. Uh, Leonard Leo, or you said you had something juicy, maybe you want to sneak in. You, you don't want me to know. <laughs> you, know you are holding back from the opera Report audience. People know where to find you, Matthew Phelan. Uh, <laughs> what do you say, man? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> what else you got for us in the last nine minutes? Uh -huh. Leonard Leo? Uh, uh, Leonard Leo, uh, who was, I believe, a co founder. Uh, he's a co he was a co-chairman co and formerly the executive vice president of the Federalist Society, one of the you know major sort of uh, legal groups in the Republican Party that has you know uh, groomed judges and recommended judicial appointments. Uh, is uh, as of this week uh, supposedly being investigated by the Washington D.C. Attorney General mm. Brian Schwab. Um, and Leonard Leo uh, was part of the same network of folks in 2020 alongside O'Keefe uh, working on this, you know, massive voter uh, suppression operation. Um, he had uh, renamed uh, a company, a nonprofit that uh, was formerly called the Judicial Education Project to... Uh, the Honest Elections Project, and using that to uh, funnel money and help support uh, lawsuits uh, that were ostensibly election integrity cases uh, pursued by this litigator, William Consovoy. Uh, so uh, 
they uh, brought a case in Florida to, uh, you know, petition against reenfranchising felons. 